Jared, it is good to see you. Welcome, and thank you for joining me today. Great. Thanks for having me. So how big are these? Your, your colleague Mike Mayo just wrote that banks are getting powelled. Uh, in other words, that the Fed's own rate hikes are leading to these mega losses. Was Silicon Valley Bank just the worst of them or the tip of the iceberg? I think that's indicative of, of the pressure that a lot of these banks are feeling in this higher for longer rate environment. Uh, you know, after Chairman Powell spoke over the last few days and the expectation for the short end saying higher for longer, um, I think really triggered the, the move that we saw at Silicon Valley, where they realized the losses on a portion of their securities and then did a sub or announced a subsequent uh, equity raise from that. Uh, you know, there is concern, liquidity concerns uh, um, on the part of investors as deposits continue to see higher cost and deposit outflows. Uh, that's putting pressure on the banks to make sure that they have uh, enough uh, liquidity on the asset side to fund that or to reinvest at higher rates. Right. So it's it's a little bit of a spiral uh, so right now. This might be a dumb question, but why did SVB buy so many treasuries and mortgage bonds last year? So they were in 2021, they were seeing a lot of inflows uh, from their clients, a lot of deposit inflows. Uh, their depositors are primarily early stage tech companies. They were the beneficiaries of massive amounts of investment on the part of venture capital and private equity. And so Silicon Valley needed to do something with those funds. So uh, in 2021, they started to uh, invest in treasuries, um, in hindsight, really at the, the worst possible time. Right. And they had a chunk or they have a chunk of securities that were yielding about 1.7% uh, with a five year plus duration. So that's putting pressure on the earnings stream. So were they a unique and extreme case because of that tech effect that caused uh, that ballooning effect you're talking about? And then they bought things at the highs. Or are other banks across the banking system in the same situation? Because plenty of people will go, it doesn't take a genius to say, if you own treasuries and mortgage-backed securities, as most of them do, and the Fed jacks rates up, of course you're facing losses. Yeah, I think what's uh, been especially difficult for Silicon Valley is that their depositor base uh, is now not able to raise money uh, from venture capital. We've seen a dry up in there. So the cash burn rate upon, among their clients is significantly higher than at other banks. So mm -hmm. they are seeing more pressure on the liability side uh, to cover those. So, yeah, all the banks are in a similar position in terms of having securities at lower yields, uh, but they're not facing the same uh, level of pressure on, on funding. I would say that Silicon Valley has a lot of options. There's a lot of levers for them to pull before they have to worry about uh, the securities valuation. They have the opportunity to borrow against those securities from the FHLB. They have off balance sheet client funds. So a lot of this excess fund that came in, they rolled off balance sheet so they can bring those back on. So it's really for Silicon Valley, for me, it's really more of an earnings pressure than mm -hmm. anything else. But the market's certainly looking at it like a capital uh, issue. Well, let me ask what I also was going to talk to you about with these crypto issues. But to me, it seems, you know, these these portfolio problems are much broader and more worrisome than crypto in some ways. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but we saw how quickly Silvergate, you know, ha that what happened there. Why do you think Signature Bank might actually benefit from their demise very quickly? Sure. Um, Silvergate was a monoline uh, bank. They were they were totally tied to crypto. Um, Signature has a component of their business tied to crypto only on the deposits. They have no asset exposure to crypto um, and they've self limited themselves, uh, saying that they will have no more than 15 percent of their deposits in crypto. So with with Silvergate now um, out of the picture, that gives them more leverage and more pricing power. So, you know, for all these uh, entities, institutional entities that are still involved in crypto, um, they need to do something. Uh, so Signature is really one of the only uh, games in town now, and that gives them more pricing power. So today, we have like five seconds, Jared. Are today's yeah. declines overdone or, or not, do you think? Yeah, for sure. I think for both companies, I would definitely be a buyer here. I think that uh, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, hmm. Capital and credit is still pretty strong.